Hi, everyone. This is a speech I prepared for the honored faculty reception at Northwest College uh, on April 13th, 2017, and that I delivered again for the NWC Foundation Board in May of 2017. Thanks for listening. So let me tell you my greatest frustration as an engineer. Whenever I meet another person and they ask, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm an engineer. I teach engineering science and math. If that person is a woman, she will often say, oh, I am not good at math. I hate math. I really, really can't do math at all. And I wonder what happened to her to make her believe that about herself. The flip side of this is, if a person were to say, I hate English, I can barely read, I'm practically illiterate, we would assume this person is not educated and maybe is not very smart. As a society, we have parameters for what we expect from educated people, which includes literacy. And yet, we don't hold this as a value for math, at least not for women. This is what really got my attention when I was a kid growing up in Butte, America. NASA. Apollo. Mission Control. It looked so exciting to me. Everybody running around, making split-second decisions, pulling paper off the dot matrix printer, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes. I wanted to be in that room. And I noticed so much about that room. But somehow, I missed the fact that everyone in that room was a man. This is a more recent picture of Mission Control. Aside from the new uniform of blue polo shirts and jeans, the major difference I see is gender diversity. All of these people are scientists. NASA didn't blow up or go under when women began working at Mission Control. The new group continues to do the same excellent work as the group from the 1960s. So here's my first point. Men make good scientists, and so do women. But here I am talking about NASA and science. What has that got to do with math? People who aren't nuts about math often dismiss its importance because, after all, they'll tell you, they've gotten along all these years without needing to solve a quadratic equation or integrating, well, anything, right? But the fact that you haven't needed it doesn't mean that using it wouldn't make your life richer. Richard Feynman was a theoretical physicist who did work in the field of quantum mechanics and particle physics. And what he says here means that from everyday things, like water running downhill, to sophisticated things like orbital mechanics, all these things are described and predicted using math. So math is the language of the natural universe. To really understand how the universe works, you have to speak math. And as if unlocking the mysteries of the universe isn't enough, Here's another reason to study math and science. We don't have enough people doing it. Right now, the US is only educating about one engineer for every four engineering jobs. We need more engineers and scientists of all stripes. The fact that we are selectively not educating women means we're missing out on half of the good engineers this country has to offer. So if we had more people studying math, we could generate more electrical power, grow better crops, make water cleaner, update the infrastructure, invent new things we haven't even thought of, and make life better for everyone. <sighs> well, the fact is, today girls are doing as well as math as boys in math by most measures. For example, in high school, girls' average performance and participation in math and science has improved over time, and in some cases, has surpassed that of boys. This graph shows the average GPA in math and science for U.S. high school students by gender between 1990 and 2005. 
girls are green, and boys are purple. As you can see, over time all students are earning higher GPAs. Both lines are going up. You can also see that girls have had higher GPAs in math and science than boys over this entire time range. This graph shows the average number of high school credits earned in math and science combined by gender between 1990 and 2005. Again, girls are green and boys are purple. As you can see, over time all students, both boys and girls, are taking more math and science credit. Both lines are going up. And girls now earn more credits in math and science than boys do, and they have been since 1992. Despite the overall positive trends in high school, the transition from high school is a critical time for young women in STEM. Women are less likely than men to declare a STEM major in college. In 2006, only about 15% of first-year female college students, compared with more than a quarter of first-year male college students, planned to declare a major in the physical sciences, math or statistics, engineering, computer science, or biological and agricultural sciences. And if we take biology and agriculture out of those numbers, only about 5% of first-year female students intend to major in a STEM area in college. So if it's not ability, why do boys pursue math and girls don't? Well, research indicates that women think they're worse at math than they are, and they also think they're worse at math than men. If you look at this list of the characteristics of a good scientist, none of these items is terribly masculine or feminine. There's a movie out now called Hidden Figures that you may have seen. The movie and the book it's based on are about NASA in the 1950s and 1960s and the African American women who worked there as mathematicians and scientists. Did any of you wonder why were all these women walking around with math degrees that long ago? Turns out, most of these women had been educated at historically black colleges to teach in segregated schools in the American South. Even then, we knew that women could do math. Pictured here is Katherine Johnson, the central character of Hidden Figures. She was something of a prodigy, graduating from high school at 14 and graduating from West Virginia State College, a historically black college, summa cum laude at age 18 with degrees in mathematics and French. She then began her first career as a teacher at, in the segregated public school system in Virginia. The year was 1937. 1937. 16 years before she went to work at NASA. Years ago, I taught the algebra sequence to a wide away array of students in a self-paced lab. If students did poorly on an exam, I met with them individually to go over their tests. I was struck by how often I could predict their responses based on gender and nationality. I think this anecdotal information can tell us something about the problem we're discussing today. Researchers have also found repeatedly that something called stereotype threat has a negative effect on girls' performance on math tests. It works like this. In the experiment, researchers give a math test to two groups of male and female college students who have similar math abilities. One group, roughly half men and half women, is told that men perform better than women do on the test, the stereotype threat group, and the other group is told that there is no gender difference, the no stereotype threat group. Well, women's performance improves when there is no threat and diminishes when there is a threat. This result has been shown again and again in other experiments. It's also interesting to note that the threat, no threat scenario has no measurable effect on boys' performance. So while it's true that talent is real, it's not true that you must be talented to do math. And whether you're talented or not, you have to practice. In her book, Grit, 
Author Angela Duckworth says that we humans love a natural. Talent seems magic and glamorous, whereas practice and hard work are more pedestrian. But we need to emphasize the possibility of growth, of developing one's ability, rather than viewing ability as something inherent and permanent. We need to emphasize that ability is something you do, rather than something you are. Carolyn Turk is a mechanical engineer in Maryland. As she points out, everyone works hard to master science. Jean Kranz purportedly said, failure is not an option. But maybe we could teach everyone that failure is not that big of a deal, as long as you keep trying. This is important for women in STEM because encountering obstacles and challenging problems is the nature of scientific work. When girls and women believe they have a fixed amount of intelligence and ability, they are more likely to lose confidence and disengage from science and engineering when they inevitably encounter difficulties in their coursework. This is true for all students, but it is particularly relevant for girls in math and science where negative stereotypes persist about their abilities. And by the way, what Jean Kranz actually said was, when bad things happen, we just calmly laid out all the options and failure was not one of them. But I guess that's harder to fit on a refrigerator magnet. If you draw an analogy to athletes, athletes have natural ability, but they also train. Nobody will perform at the top of their sport if they don't exercise, eat carefully, and practice. It's the same with math. Ability is important and helpful, but I'm afraid it's also overrated. This is the only formula I put in my presentation. I borrowed the notion of only one formula from Stephen Hawking, the great astrophysicist. When he wrote his book, A Brief History of Time, he was careful to use only one formula. And my science and math colleagues may notice that the units don't work out, that this is probably not a dimensionally homogeneous equation. I chose the figure on this page, the ore digger, for a couple of reasons. First, he really looks like grit, don't you think? Second, he's the mascot of my alma mater, the Montana School of Mines. Obviously, it's not a charm school. But I mention this because I wanted to talk for a minute about the Montana School of Mines. This college opened its doors in 1900 and graduated its first class in 1904. That first graduation, there were two majors, mining engineering and electrical engineering, and eight graduates. Of those eight, two were women, and one of the women was a valedictorian. The School of Mines was always co-ed. Women always studied there with men. And yet, while many women attended over the years, there were no other female graduates until the 1960s. My husband David and I graduated there together in 1986, and now our son Ben is an ore digger, studying mechanical engineering. Have you ever driven over Togedy Pass? It's a beautiful road. John and Joanne Enger's daughter, Kaya, was the lead engineer on the road. She was responsible for the completion of the project, and she brought it in on schedule and on budget. Now, how's that for a pal girl? I especially like this quote because it's by an artist, the field I most often associate with inspiration and flashes of insight. It's nice to know that hard work is necessary to create art as well. My final picture today is a Facebook post. Geology student Annika Deckert sent her mom a picture of an experiment she's working on. She's simulating the possible origin of life on Earth at the Jet Propulsion Lab. As I scan Facebook in the future, I hope I see many more posts like this. So don't say I'm bad at math because you're not. Don't accept it from your students or from anybody. Recognize the importance and beauty of math 
and the endless possibilities unlocked if you try hard and learn. Math ability is not an innate characteristic, but rather is developed through interest, practice, purpose, and hope. Be interested, work hard, and have faith in yourself. And if you encounter an obstacle, maybe say, I'm not good at that math yet. Thank you.